exactly the same map, we share exactly the same territory because we share the same memory. It is because we share the same memory that this is a human memory. It is because we share the same memory that we have the same rights, those are human rights. Memory and the truth are not just a capacity we have, they are also a right and they have been recognized as such. Look at what you are doing now. You are remembering, and it doesn't matter what the authorities will say. You are free to remember. You don't need a judicial order to remember. And there cannot be a judicial order to forbid you to remember. And what you are doing here now not need a tribunal. What happens in a tribunal that's, that costs billions of dollars can be very frustrating. And the lawyers will discuss forever what is the definition of a crime, what is genocide, what's crime against humanity, etc. They can debate that for centuries. But your memory cannot be debated for centuries and does not depend on the argument of a lawyer. If you remember a genocide, it is a genocide. And the lawyers can debate that forever, but that is not the matter here. Because the definition you are using is not the legal definition. You are using a moral definition. When you go to places like Omarska or places like Ayacucho, and I hope one, some of you come to my country, after you eat to those places, it's very difficult to think and to give sense to concepts like rights, humanity, justice. But then at the same time that that immense pessimism <clears throat> invades you, then you see this, all these young people, the kids, the life. And that holds another enormous truth. That in spite of Omarska, Ayacucho, Auschwitz, in spite of all that, human beings are magnificent. We are able to reclaim places where horror has taken place. And even in those places, we can plant firmly the banner of our hope and the banner of our rights. I want to talk about them. And I don't mean the balloons. I mean the people 
who left you behind to come and remember them. Since the beginning of humanity, we have done this thing. We erect stones and mounds of earth to remember the dead. We have done it for all time. It is primal to being a human being. We have done it almost everywhere that large numbers of people have died or especially been murdered and especially brutally murdered, apart from here. What's the problem? The richest man in Britain, who pays no tax, by the way, owns this mine. Gentlemen, what's the problem? We need to see some real pressure now. You have your Mittal monument for the Olympic Games in London. Where is the one here? Where is theirs? The people whose names are on those balloons. Where the hell is it? Okay, make your money, make your billions, do your politics, do whatever turns you on. But what about these people? What about you who they leave behind? Spare us just a penny, please. Just a moment of your thought. Because time is not the great healer. There is this expression, time is the great healer. It is not. We've been coming many, many years here now, and I may read it wrong, but I think it's getting worse, not better, for many of you, if not most of you. That's true. So let's listen to the voices of the dead, the loudest voices of this place. And let's listen, if we can, to their two voices, their voices of rage and their voices of love. Let's listen to the contempt the dead must feel for the indifference of the powerful people who deny you and your children a place on this site to place flowers and to gather. If there is no monument or a move towards a monument when we gather here for the 21st anniversary, of this carnage, this slaughter, this genocide. That will be to spit on the graves of the dead and in the faces of you, their loved ones, and the grandchildren they never knew whom they leave behind. Last year I asked you not to allow this place and the brutes who murdered your loved ones to own them. I, I, I wanted people to leave perhaps remembering a birthday or a New Year's Eve or watching football or uh, Ramadan, Bayram, Christmas, either Christmas, um, just to have a joke, to remember love in your house and laughing together because you are very good at laughing, you Bosnian people. Uh, this is not a joke. When I asked my beloved Fikrit Alic how he survived, he said, I survived because I am a man who laughs. That is not a funny remark. It's a very serious one. So now we've let them into the sky. They are yours. They do not belong to Omaska. They do not belong to the bastards who killed and tortured and raped and maimed them. They belong to you. There is a man here called Sheriff Velic. He said something uh, interesting about this place. He, he said that when they were on the pista here, they would watch the pigeons gather on the roof and the guards would shoot them for fun. He said it was much harder to, to kill the pigeons than it was to kill us. And he said, but the funny thing was, the pigeons kept coming back to the roof. They, they, they wouldn't go away, they just kept coming back all the time, even though these idiots were shooting them their ridiculous games. And he said, the guns of the Serbs are not as strong as the hearts of the pigeons. He's over there, thank you, Shirley. You are the hearts of the pigeons. You are stronger than they are. Don't be afraid of any rich businessmen, politicians, any of that crap. You have the lead. You are alive. Thank you. I love you. Peace, peace, peace. Yeah.